Hello people, today we're going to be pyrolysizing this so-called coal here. Now this is actually what I consider dirty carbon. This actually came from my previous reactor. What happens is this is the result of an incomplete pyrolysis reaction where the plastic or whatever waste product put in there is half carbonized and half not carbonized. So it's really extremely contaminated carbon full of oils, full of microplastics, regular plastics, other organic debris um and there's some big chunks in it i ended up shredding up and you know with me shredding those up they also kind of got some plastics from the shredder on them that kind of just got stuck on them but it's all right because like i said this is already contaminated with plastics anyway so those little bit of plastics that we just added in there aren't really going to change the overall uh product or the overall results of what we're doing here so what i'm trying to do is i want to recover all of the energy out of the organic matter in here while just leaving the coal behind so all this dirty oil and all this crap that and crud that's in here should pretty much be eliminated by the time we're done with this reaction so the total weight of everything after i swept up all of this stuff that fell on the ground ended up being 23.136 pounds or 10.494 kilos so another thing i want to mention is in my previous episodes we'll always add catalyst to aid in the microwave absorption and some other things i'm adding no catalyst to this coal at all because this coal actually completely on its own will absorb microwaves just like graphite will carbon based products or tires for example or another example they, they absorb microwaves on their own just fine so we're not adding any and also there are you know other catalysts i add like lime which help with the um formation of um or absorbing to acidic products but there could already be lime in here from when i put this in the reactor before so we're just going to say no catalyst for this run at all so i loaded all that carbon in Go ahead, spin these blades around. These blades are going to be what agitate the carbon while it's in there, while the microwaves are penetrating it and breaking it down. This will allow us to get even coverage of it and not just have certain spots that get carbonized and certain spots that don't because that's exactly what my last reactor did and that's why I didn't work. So right now I'm pushing out this argon or I'm pushing in this argon rather, which will push out the oxygen because this is a reaction that requires very small or no amounts of oxygen and as many of you suggested i'm spinning the blades as i'm pushing the argon in to make sure that all the pockets between the carbon uh actually have oxygen pushed out of them and argon pushed in so that should hopefully help so after a, a couple minutes of pushing out the argon you can see there's actually some flammable vapors that are coming out of either the carbon or the reactor and as long as it's not exploding, that means that it's probably little oxygen in there. So we're gonna go ahead and turn this reactor on. And after I turned it on, after two hours, I did a little checkup just to show you that we have a flammable vapors that are forming. Uh, so this, this is purely just from the coal. And as you can see, as I turn these blades, the flame gets bigger because a lot of the pockets are being broken up. Some new areas are being exposed to microwaves. So we have a yoga ball full. That's where the, these flammable vapors are collected. I don't just have it flaring off most of the time. I have yoga balls that it's collected in. And we had one yoga ball full around the, the um, two hour mark there. So much later in the run at nighttime, I had actually filled up pretty much all my yoga balls. So I had no yoga balls left to fill, so I had to actually go flare it to my burner over here. As you see, it's connected over there to that, that um, split junction connector. And this normally will run the distiller, this, this burner, so you can see it produces enough flame to do that. So next morning, I had to let it cool off overnight. Uh, we go ahead, we take this man way off. And as you can see, uh, you can see the, the carbon in there is looking a lot better. It's looking a lot more decomposed, a lot more uniform. 
uh, you definitely can tell there was a lot of inorganic stuff in there like metals and ceramics you can just look at it and tell it's quite dusty now compared to before it was really like you know kind of slimy before but now it's really dusty it put dust literally everywhere and there's just some big chunks of it that just fall out all at once you can see all those metals and stuff in there that we recover So here are the results of the pyrolysis of the pyrolysis coal. As we can see, compared to how it looked when it went in there, it is looking a lot better. There are these big chunks here, but they actually are completely brittle and just come apart. Now there were some parts that I would say are like absolutely carbonized, like dusty carbon, and then there's other parts which are more like this, like black carbon, right? Which are like... It's not like, it, I feel like there's still some moisture or some oil content in the, those parts. Um, so maybe it could have been in there for a little bit longer. We left it in there for about five hours total. Um, there's some bits of fiberglass. That's what all this is. There's actually, there was a light bulb in there too. That's what this is right here. A light bulb. So you can see the, the recovery. Um, there's recovery of anything inorganic. Um, there's some metals, some copper. Uh, this is actually like an, a little alligator clip to the, one of those um, metal wire things, I forgot what you call them, the little jumpers or whatever. So clearly the metal recovery, whatever this is, is this like a diode or something? I don't know what this is, but yeah, this obviously is inorganic. So I would say in terms of like how it looks before putting it in and now, it's definitely night and day, like way better. Um, I'd be way safer in saying that this has a lot less microplastics in it, if any at all. Um, maybe some oils, some residual oils though, I would say that. Um, just given how some of this carbon is a little bit um, not on the completely um, dry side. Well, I mean, it's not, it's not like moist or wet, but like it's not like dusty like some of it was, right? So I don't know, I mean, you guys may know more than me about coal. And, and different qualities of coal, but I would say this is definitely a lot better than it was before because before it literally was oily. Um, what is this? What on earth? This is some type of electronic part. <laughs> well, there you go, guys. When you put e-waste in there, you get you get the metals back out. What is this though? I can see some copper on it. it looks like something from Transformers. Once again, we have these big briquettes that sometimes form, you know, look at it, it actually has some structure to it, some geometry and all. Once again, they're all brittle and they just kind of fall apart. Well, this one's a little bit tougher at some points, but yeah, I mean, overall, definitely way better. If I did this in my old reactor, it would have taken me like 22 hours or more worth of time to turn all that dirty carbon into actual decent carbon like this, 22 hours or more. Let's go ahead and weigh this. Now, it is 16.94 pounds. So that is actually quite a bit of weight loss. That is almost 6 pounds of weight loss. Now, I will say, I got a ton of gas from this. A ton. I got 4 yoga balls worth of gas. Most runs only give me 3 on average. I got 4 this time, so a lot. But we also put a lot in there. We put 23 pounds worth of coal. And coal is... The most energy dense thing you can get, right? Let's see how much oil we got. Alright, got my measuring cup here. Well, there is quite a bit in here. I can feel it. It has some heft. Oh! Oh, that is some good quality oil. I can just tell by the color as I pour that. Hold on, let me get this closer. I can just tell by the color of how when I pour this. You see that color? That is some good oil. That is some good oil. Wow. Oh, that's, a, that's quite a bit of it, too. Almost a full measuring cup there. Now, this 
coal or this carbon that we put in this reactor, the dirty coal, had a lot of oils in it. A lot of motor oil in it, just like mixed with it. It was like it absorbed a lot of motor oil and stuff. So we recovered that motor oil out of it clearly, which is something you actually normally, with the normal circumstance, like how would you ever recover oils out of something like coal, like other than burning it off, right? So clearly, this has a real use application for things contaminated with oil. Not only will you clean the oil in an environmentally friendly way, but you're going to recover that energy. That is quite a good amount of oil there. Let's see how she burns on there. Burns just like the rest. Very nice. very energy dense lastly I will prove that this gas is calorific flammable and quite a good quality gas too we will compress this gas later so we can then use this gas to run a distiller which would distill and separate the different fractions of all the oils we've been collecting the last thing I want to say is I actually got this compressor out of an old air conditioner the previous compressors I've been using have been refrigerator compressors. So this is a tip to anybody doing what I do. Just go for the old air conditioners, like the little window air conditioners right away. Because these compressors are way more powerful compared to the refrigerator compressors. Now these compressors are always tall, while the refrigerator ones are kind of more wide and bulky. So these are the ones to look for, guys. We're going to use these. Hopefully this can let me compress the gas at least up to around 125 PSI. Right now my max is only 100. Oh, 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 oh,